And we're live. What is up, everybody? Welcome to what episode are we on? Episode 13. 13 of the Free Skates podcast. So we have a couple of guests here today. Um, the important one who's not actually working with us all the time is Hurl. <laughs> Welcome Hello. to the podcast. What's that? What's that? Welcome. Um, welcome, welcome. Introduce yourself. Uh, I'm Hurl. I go by Trey. Trey. I've been free skating for two and a half years now. Nice. And um, I'm 29. Oklahoma. Yep, I'm from Oklahoma. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Welcome to the podcast. We actually did try to do a podcast with you previously, but we had a uh, encoding error and lost all the footage, which was super annoying. I'm but, very um, unfortunate. But that was like a long time ago, and a lot has changed, actually. So we can oh, kind yeah. of uh, update, get updates. So thank you very much for joining us, by the way. Appreciate it. No problem, man. We love Trey because we love our community, and Trey is an awesome member of our community. You post a lot on um, USA Free Skaters. Um, big tricks. That was a misclick of mine. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> You post a lot on USA Free Skaters and and oh yeah, we got we got one person, Lucas. What's up, Lucas? Welcome to the uh, podcast. Um, okay, so let's just jump right into it. So how? Um, uh, let's see. Let's start. What is Team Final Form? You want to tell me about what is Team Final Form? Well, it's a group of people. Like it's just different sizes and like you know, like we all come from different backgrounds. Like, I have a guy named Johnny. He's from California. And he's been skateboarding, snowboarding, and all that. And he picked up free skating in, like, a week. Like, pumping and everything. So I was super jealous because I didn't have nobody to teach me anything. And he was mm -hmm. just learning super quick. And I'm like, man. And there was no <laughs> tutorials at the time. So I was like, uh. And then we have Chris. And he's just a skateboarder. But he the one that started with me, started the whole free form. We didn't have a name yet or anything. It was like thinking of a name. And then Ethan, uh, he's from Oklahoma also. He's from Lawton, Oklahoma. And he was skateboarding nice. and longboarding and stuff like that. And he came up here and he helped me with a lot of tricks like my Tokyos and 360s and uh, my throwbacks. Yeah. 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 We told. I want to talk about all the all the tricks that you've been working on and and uh, developing. That that'd be awesome. Hi, Chris B. Welcome to the podcast. Thanks for joining us. Welcome back. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, welcome back. Frequent member. Yes. <laughs> um, that's really cool. I actually thought team team final form was like all Oklahoma riders. So it's interesting to me to hear that um, you have some people that are. Um, like remote or not remote or just like from California. So, the, so. Yeah. Cool. I was going to say the way I understand it, is it like just a skate group that you guys have come together and put a name behind? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Cause uh, Johnny, he's from California, but he lives in Oklahoma now. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. So he's from California, but he lives in Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. so you guys can get together locally. Yeah. He like lives like, Two houses down for me. <laughs> nice. Oh, cool. What? Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. I'm assuming that's how you guys met. Yeah, he saw me. Uh, cause Outside. I moved. Yeah, I moved out here. Got my house built like four years ago. Never even talked to the guy. And then when I got my free skates, he saw me. And he was like, "Man, what are those? Can I try them?" I was like, "Yeah, bro, anytime." And then that's how we met up. And then we just been hanging out ever since. Isn't that funny? How like free skates do that. You just yeah. see somebody out. I mean, you just look over you're like, excuse me, sir. <laughs> could, could I try those really quick? <laughs> like, right. Oh, yeah, of course. It's and a great conversation. Together all the time. Every time I'm in public, that happens. Yeah, it's awesome. We all have similar experiences. Yeah, it's a really good conversation starter. Uh -uh. Oh, for sure. Icebreaker. I hear, I hear your kiddo. You got your kiddo with you? <laughs> yeah, he's right here on the bed. Nice. <laughs> cool. How many kids do you have? I have two. I have two boys. Nice. Yeah. Are they? They'll be skating they, soon. Yeah, they free uh, skate rippers yet. My oldest son, he does. If y'all seen some of the videos, he free skates. Elijah, he be free skating. Oh he yeah, yeah, yeah. He can't pump, but he can like 
like just coast coast down like the hill and stuff. Huh. Yeah. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. I want to actually pull up a. I'm gonna put my phone. Hey, Darn it! One hey. sec. <laughs> Jeff, where are you going? <laughs> but I was gonna say about bringing people together. Um, it's a good conversation starter, but then also for like. Um, I feel like when you meet somebody that also freezes for the first time, it's like an immediate connection. Like, you both understand why why you're at it, and you instantly become friends. Um, at least I found every time I meet a free skater. Yeah. So it has a way of just connecting people. And uh, because it's so niche, uh, people really, really seek that out. Yeah, Chris B is saying that's why he needs an extra pair. Chris B, I know where you can get one. It's uh, usa.jmkred.com. <laughs> if you ever uh, want to wow. buy an extra pair. Uh, but yeah, Perfect. it is nice to have a, an, extra, an extra set to be able to kind of be able to skate at the same time and show people how to how to ride a little bit easier than if you just have one set. Speaking of community members, uh, we got Odwin serenaded abyss in the chat. Hello, nice. Hello. Welcome to the welcome to the chat or welcome to the uh, podcast. I'm actually looking for a, a video of, of your kid because I think that'd be really cute to feature. <laughs> got some team final form videos. <clears throat> I know. I know. I post one on uh, on the US A free skate. Oh, you didn't? I did. I did. Oh, you did. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's right. How many riders in total do you guys have out there? Um, yeah, I think it's just four of us. Four of us. That's awesome. Yeah, it's like, more than my... some people have. <laughs> it's yeah. a lot more than some people have, but it's cool to have that group to be able to like meet up and just hang out for a little bit. We do a, a thing here once a week on Thursdays. Um, where we bring like 15 sets of skates out to Balboa Park, and we have a lot of people just ride around. Um, people that have been riding for a while, also people that just want to try them for the first time, which is really cool. See, I wish, I wish I had a lot of more people that can skate with us too. I mean, I like my all my neighbors; they all try it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How'd that go? It'd be cool because, like, my neighbor in front of me, Adam, like he's a longboarder and. He got it down. He can he can't pump, but he can like, you know, just balance on him. But he was like, Yeah, I'm gonna buy me a pair. And uh, I said, bro, I got a little extra uh Amazon pair, but man, those are crap to Jam <laughs> yeah. It's harder to learn on sometimes, yeah. Yeah, cause when I first my first pair of free skates was Jam I mean I'm Amazon and I was like, yo, I give up. This is never gonna happen. Yeah. And then I finally learned how to pump. And then uh, I bought some JMKs like maybe like two weeks after. And then I was like, yo, this is way easier. I'm, it was just gliding after that. Nice. Coach, it's interesting. That's usually the, the, a common progression that happens. Mm -hmm. and we've had people come through the shop and say the same thing. We had a guy come out. This is probably a couple of months back. He brought a set. He's like, hey, do you guys mind showing me a couple of tricks on these? Well, yeah, of course. Like, we'll, we'll see if we can get you rolling. And he couldn't really get going. And all of a sudden, he stepped on ours and he was doing fine. And mm -hmm. we were trying to sell them on. We're like, we're like hey, uh, do you just hypothetically, if you just stepped on these and see how they go, um, would you try? He's like, yeah, sure. He gets them. He's like, oh my god, these are so different, mm -hmm. um, which is great. It's great to know that we we actually have a product out there that'll that'll work for some better than others. Yeah, I found a I found a video of of your kid um, on USA Free Skaters. Can we can we show it? Oh yeah, yeah, that's fine. All right, here it is. Let's see. And then make sure we uh yeah, let's do it like that. I remember this. Yeah. This, this so, one's really he, cute. Yeah, he was so excited. Here we go. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Little dance. So awesome. That's like that's the emotion that we all like know and understand <laughs> when yeah. learning to free skate Man. maybe not as good of dance that. moves but <laughs> we have the yeah definitely not good Gabe's definitely not good at dance no Especially. yeah not a, yeah that, that's some un, unbeatable dance moves <laughs> dance was dope yes <laughs> uh, we got a cool comment from uh gazgano fpv i have been riding flatland bmx for 17 years now one friend showed me uh, free skate, and I decided to start riding now since four days. Four days, cool. That's awesome. awesome. Heck yeah! Congrats. Yeah, it's a oh, it's yeah. a long um, 
uh, fun journey. So uh, enjoy it. Yeah, yeah. Long in the sense, well, it's a fun journey. Mm -hmm. Long in a good way. Lots yeah, yeah. of lots of fun to be had. Endless things you can do. Yes. So with uh, with your it. little with your uh, Oklahoma team, how has learning to free skate with others like how has free skating with others helped uh, or affected your learning? So, because Ethan he'd been skating maybe like two or three months longer than me, and he's super sick. So you know like all the body varials and like all the crazy stuff like y'all be doing. Nice. And so every time we meet up, because he lives like an hour away from me. Uh -huh. So like every other Saturday or Sunday, he comes up here with his girlfriend and mm. we go to hit up skate parks that come to my house and skate. So nice. he teaches, teaches me the stuff I don't know. And I teaches him the stuff he don't know. So we just. What, what stuff that you know that he doesn't know? Uh, Just switch it. He can uh -huh. get them sometimes, but it ain't like consistently. Right. Like I can yeah. get them all the time. Nice. It took and... me over four years to figure that out. <laughs> <laughs> it's taking me 10 plus and I'm still working on it. Man. Work, work, working working on, it. on it. And yeah. from switching that back, that front foot to the back foot, that would it be. Hmm. Switching the front foot to the back foot. So it's yeah. like more focusing on tossing your front foot back. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Because I feel, oh, I feel like I always catch the, the back foot going leading. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah, what Maddie always says for the switch it is to focus on the blind one, which in most cases is that front skate. Mm -hmm. You've got to do the one on. that you can see, right? Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's yeah. cool that you were able to find such a cool connection that close to you in Oklahoma. Like, it could be like you know, two or three hours, but an hour isn't too bad to just mm -hmm. meet up, like you said, every other week. Yeah. That's uh, It's got to be really convenient to have out there. Yeah, it was crazy because, like, when we first met, like, in person, we was like, what's up? I'm Ethan. I'm Trey. And then we just went into the skate park and just started skating. <laughs> it was like we didn't say anything else until, like, after we took, like, a break. You're just speaking, speaking through the skating. Right? <laughs> <laughs> um... Honestly, yeah, like skating with others, I find is like super beneficial because it's even if you think someone's just like better than you, it's mm -hmm. rare that it's like they're strictly better than you. Like a lot of times there's like something that is, you know, that you know that they don't know or vice versa. And you can kind of just exchange knowledge in that way. Like, mm -hmm. Even even people I thought were just like totally out of my league sometimes are like wait what a turnaround or something like usually like funky things like a turnaround or like uh i don't know turnaround position or like what are some other funky ones or like combos sometimes doing combos where you'd like you do a throw forward to uh uh <laughs> Throw forward a throwback or something, or just like throw forward to combos. a brain malfunction. Yeah, <laughs> I've done. The, I do those all the time. Insert Windows loading or <laughs> dial up or whatever. shutting down. Spinning rainbow ball of death. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like no. when I go out and skate, I'm like way better than other people at getting out of breath, and like <clears throat> like not being able to ride for more than 15 minutes at a time. Like I really have capped that market. Um, so it's right. nice to be around other skaters to really push me to go 15 or 16 minutes. And also teach them how to ride. How to get out of breath. Out of yeah. breath. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, hey, order a pizza and I'll show you. <laughs> Stuff like that. Right. <laughs> um, yeah. Should we move on to the next question, which is yeah, sure. what motivates you to get out and skate? I mean... Like every time I, I like, noticed, yeah, you like post pretty much every day and something like that. So you yeah, have some I, unparalleled motivation. <laughs> like every time I get on social media and I see like somebody do like a cool trick or something, I'm like, man, let me go in my garage. If it depends on the weather, I just go in my garage or I just go outside and just skate. Yeah, and it's and it's really good for my cardio because, man, being a dad. Like my, it's like each time after I had a kid, like I gained some weight and got that dad weight. 
And then I was like, dang, like, I really don't like cardio like that. Like, I'll lift weights or something, but Same. the cardio, I'm like, ugh. But I was like, the skating was just, it's like second nature for me. So I just go out there and just skate. Yeah. Yeah. It's like functional cardio that you're just doing for fun. And then you're like, mm-hmm. you, you reap the benefits. Most right. people see a, a large uh, change in their calf muscles. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Or inner thigh strength all of a sudden after riding for, uh, for a good amount of time. Mm-hmm. But then zero arms still. Man. Well, if you go like this. <laughs> you just look weird so don't do that so just yeah ride normal <laughs> no uh yeah like i you have to trick yourself to go out and do workouts sometimes like for mm-hmm. me it's like i hate you know i would hate to go to the gym or something like that it's like not a mm-hmm. thing that i'm motivated to do so um i am motivated to go out and skate just because it's you know fun it's purely just like playing on skates and it ends up being a crazy workout Right, Jogging right. is for the birds. <laughs> that is correct, Crispy. Wouldn't they just fly, Crispy? <laughs> That's, yeah. I mean, wouldn't that... What does for the birds even mean? <laughs> it's like saying it's for the yeah, whatevers. Yeah. yeah, but like, how did that start? Hmm. Uh, like, I don't know. Like, you, know. you should look that up, Gabe, while you have a second. Go ahead. We'll let, we want a full report back. From five the birds, report. don't the birds take the, the bird scooters? No, it's talk. definitely it's definitely <laughs> an older <laughs> saying than that. Oh, okay. <laughs> Unless you're talking about like birds, like how like people from like uh, Britain say for for like girls or guys, no, it's for girls. Like they want to date birds, whatever that is, or maybe they like birds to date with. What? I'm gonna, I'm gonna what? <laughs> mm. I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna stop watching. Yeah. Too hot to handle. Yeah. Today, I'm gonna stop watching that. What about the so, what so about started, food? Like if you're if you're if you're sick of food, like if if that food is for the birds, you give the food out to the birds. You know? Oh, maybe mm. it's that. Yeah, that like scraps. Mm-hmm. Exactly. That could be right. <laughs> um, I'm gonna think it's something else. Yeah, <laughs> for bird scooters. Bird scooters. That sounds like yeah, a restaurant. I, I've noticed that when I don't skate, it got weird. Crispy says, "Got weird." <laughs> I've noticed that really when just I... <laughs> leaving this open for interpretation. Yeah. Um, not worth consideration. Unimportant. <laughs> are you are you actually looking it up? <laughs> I like Jeff better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Very interesting tangent. Uh, I don't know. I think it's. Uh... I think it's for too hot to handle the show on Netflix. Are you sure that's no, no. not it. Oh, no. I think that has nothing to do with this. <laughs> ah, damn it! It's really trying to get that point across. Uh, yeah. Well, to move on from that amazing topic, um, <laughs> perfect segue. Yeah, perfect segue. <laughs> I've noticed that when I don't get out and skate, you know, in a certain number of days, like I just like. A, it's like a building up and then i'm like i gotta go out and and skate yeah you know i have this pent-up energy and stuff like that and i'm sure and another thing is like when i was in college i didn't have any time at all and i'm i'm sure you relate to not having any time at all having kids you mm-hmm. know um that you could just go out at any point in time and get a little skating and even if it's you know just 15 minutes or so right yeah because uh my, cause my oldest son, he's in school, so I ain't got to worry about him really that much. But my youngest son, yeah, he'd be here with me. And when he takes naps, I either work out or I skate. And I nice. usually go skate. And now since I put a, a TV in my garage, like, he can just hang out in there with me while I skate. Oh, so, cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And he can skate a little bit, too. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, that's oh, that's your, your oldest, oldest son. Goes yeah. To school. Older yeah. One. yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. And my oldest son, he got like skateboards, scooters, bikes. He does all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, that's nice. That's uh, cool that you put a TV in your garage. Is that that's like a good um, method of dealing with when you have inclement weather, right? Like, does it snow where you live? Oh yeah, we just got out of a blizzard uh, last what? week. Yeah. Holy crap! Yeah, I didn't go to Honestly, work or I anything. Didn't, <laughs> I didn't think of Oklahoma as being so snowy, just because I guess it's close to Texas, and I don't really think of Texas as being very snowy. See, Oklahoma got bi- bipolar weather. It'd be yeah. snowing, and then it'd be like seventy degrees next week. That's the Midwest <laughs> for you. 
I'm like, <laughs> yo, why did I move here? <laughs> it's got like whiplash. Man. <laughs> So, so that's the technique is if you're an outdoorsy person, you want to skate, you got to trick out your garage if you live oh, in yeah. a place like that. Is that pretty much your solution, like your go-to thing? Yeah, it's my garage because it's like, you know, it's just right there. So, you yeah. know, like when you think about the gym, you're like, oh, like I got to get there, then work out. But my right. garage is like right there. Step oh, out yeah. the door, wheels. <laughs> Heck yeah. yeah. I mean, honestly, they should make houses with like bigger garages for oh people. Oh my gosh. Like, you know, who are like into these like <laughs> skate sports. Yes. <laughs> so I get so mad because like when I got my house built, uh, like the plan I got or whatever, it's only a two car garage. And then I see all my other neighbors that like got three car garage. I'm like, I wish I had that. Yeah. <laughs> so I should have invested more. <laughs> The the you could just flip it to turn your regular house into the garage and then put the whole live in the garage into yeah. the garage. There you go. Yeah. Hey, super super smart. Hey, <laughs> if my wife let me do that, <laughs> <laughs> I feel like the garage is like mine and then the house is hers. Yeah, it's usually how it ends up. I'm still looking for a garage here in San Diego, so we'll figure it out one of these days. <laughs> it's about yeah. a, a million dollars for a garage, just just for a garage. About a million. Yeah. We're we're living the apartment life. So is Gabe. None of us have garages. Our garage is the JMK HQ. Yeah, pretty pretty much. Much. I got I mean, nice weather. I mean, we do have wrong. good weather. Yeah. We have good weather. It did, so it did rain today. today. And it rained it did quite rain a bit today. today. Briefly yeah. for like ten yeah. minutes. There's about fifty five crashes in fifteen minutes on the interstate. <laughs> and now so. it's dry. And now it's dry. Yeah. <laughs> See, that <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, Oklahoma's tornado alley says. Christy. Oh my gosh, it really, it really is. Oh damn. Yeah. Do you um, have like a, a a tornado shelter? Seller, or anything? Yeah, yeah. You got it uh, in your. Uh, most people got them in their uh, in the garages, but a lot of people have them in their. Some people have them in their like, backyard. Hmm. I feel like it's better to have it in your garage so you can just go instead of right. going outside and getting sucked up. <laughs> getting sucked up. Like, Do you yeah, ever think about maybe getting a little wind sail and not being on your free skates during a tornado? Hey, hey, <laughs> that hey, you probably go super fast. Yeah. Not no, me. No. You could probably. <laughs> <laughs> I won't do it, but I'm just curious if you. It's like wind, like wind, wind surfing. <laughs> you see them like, flying by. Yeah, but you'd only be able to do it on like one side of the tornado. Like as soon as it passes you, then sucks you, you up. suck the other way. Yeah. yeah. You'll want straps. <laughs> no. Free skate wings. Free skate wings. That'd be honestly awesome, but dangerous. Yeah, <laughs> yeah not in theory. It'd be awesome in theory. In theory, yeah. Yeah, I'd take an earthquake over if we get in tornadoes, man. Yeah. Um, tornadoes are scary. Of all the earthquakes out here, I haven't felt a single one. See, I so, need I like that. I mean, they're talking about some big one that's supposed to be coming up, but nobody knows when. They've always they've been, been, they've been that, right my now. mother said the same thing in <laughs> the 60s like, the big one's coming, the big California's one. gonna break off into the sea. Like, come on, I mean, don't get me wrong, it's gonna happen tomorrow now that we are talking about it, but mm. we're fine for now. <laughs> I mean, I'm just hoping for beachfront property if I live inland, you know. Yeah, that would it would turn it into beachfront property. Yeah, yeah. I mean that and all the you know, horrific, horrific deaths. <laughs> yeah, I feel like the biggest thing about living in San Diego or California, anytime an earthquake happens, is not actually feeling it. It's seeing it be posted on social mm. media, just saying like, "Did you guys feel that?" And you're like, "Wait, what? What did I feel?" And then. Eventually, you're just like, oh, there must have been a tornado, and that's or um, earthquake rather, not a tornado. <clears throat> that's that's all. That's all that happens. There's been a couple big ones, bigger ones when I was a kid, but I haven't. I'm 33, and I haven't felt much since. Wow, really? You heard it here. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I think uh, Trey, you were saying you wanted to talk about some some tricks yeah lines, or stuff that you're working on or yeah i feel like 
some of my tricks, like whenever I do like uh, hey. what is it? A Tokyo. I feel like I can't go into another trick after that quick enough. I feel like my lines are like they kind of like drag sometimes. With if I after I do a Tokyo, I feel like that got to be my first. That got to be my last trick. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Well, for one, you, a lot of your tricks you're in like a limited space, so it's mm-hmm. really important that they don't drag, right? Like if you're going from one side of your garage to the other mm-hmm. side, you have to bust it out real quick. Um, yeah. But what causes? So you're in a Tokyo. Do you do a Tokyo drop off? Yeah, I do Tokyo drop off. Uh huh. And then and then you catch the skate and then so you think it it just it's taking too long to do that drop off? Sometimes because like. When I do the drop off, like, mm-hmm. and like that, the drop off while it's like sliding, sometimes mm-hmm. it takes too. It slides. Maybe yeah, yeah maybe it slides too long, uh-huh. or I just uh, I make it go out too far, and so I gotta catch it, you know. Yeah. So then, so, it, are you like in like a weird position to catch it, and then you kind of gotta readjust? Yeah, because I feel like it's too far back, and I'm not like dropping it off faster. I guess. Or closer to my to my body because they like kind of be back and I have to like reach for it to grab it. Hmm. Yeah. Then you must be like really into Tokyo. Like if if you're able to like really push your leg back, mm-hmm. it must mean that uh, you're pretty pretty comfortable in the Tokyo position because a lot of people can't like barely get their leg far enough back in order to like miss their foot when they, when the skate travels past them. Mm-hmm. Um, so <laughs> I, I would say that like for the most part, um, I mean also with smooth ground, it's going to stretch it out a little bit, um, like because the skate's going to roll more. And mm-hmm. then another thing is like, just, you can try to like give it a little push back in order to catch it quicker. Um, I'm trying to think, do you ever push back on your skate? Gabe, when you're um, doing a, a Tokyo drop off, I, I more think of it as a drop off where you just like. For me, off. for oh, me, hi, well, guys. I, <laughs> me, I sometimes, <laughs> for me, sometimes almost Somebody. slow it down. Or, <laughs> yeah, no, sometimes I'll. <laughs> What's his name? Uh, Liam. Liam. Adorable. That's great. That's a nice, strong name. <laughs> Like a lion. Yeah, well, my Tokyos, I feel like, what is it? I, I don't do the invert. I bring my back, my back foot in front of my, in front of my uh, leading foot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's and fine. I like, I kind of like That's... tilt it, tilt my toe tilt down, kind of. Uh huh. Like while I'm doing it. Uh huh. So I don't know if that has anything to do with it or not. Not really. No. Um, it probably, if you angle it, like if you're, um, the back foot that came in front, if you mm-hmm. angle that too much, when you let go, the skate is going to travel backwards and be like mm-hmm. kind of out of the way. Mm-hmm. So you don't want to angle it too much, just enough to get it around your, your foot. But, mm-hmm. um, yeah, I'm trying to think. So for, for me, I do embers. Um, I've been noticing that mine kind of, yeah, it's basically all I do anymore. Um, I'll share my screen real quick. Um, oh, so there we go. You got a video, instructional video. So this one's quick, but I think mine sometimes almost drops it too quick. So, well, you're moving fast in that one. Especially when I move. Okay, that's the issue. You're right, Jeff. Yeah. Thanks for pointing that out. Because when I'm going fast, I find that I'm moving faster, and therefore the dra- the skate is dragging backward faster. Like I'm mm-hmm. moving quicker, right? So I almost have to kick it forward so that it catches up with me. Mm. Just the reverse problem. Um, how? What's the speed that you do your Tokyo's at? Like, because I use it normally, they be. My Tokyo's are just fine. I just do the Tokyo. But in a line, I save it for last. So uh, maybe I'm just pumped out. Like, <laughs> I'm like tired. Well, because I think the speed part that Jeff brought up is a good point. Because I think if you're doing it slow at a slow pace, which is obviously no problem, the skate is going to, I guess, 
slide a bit slower, I think. Um, and it might take a little bit longer to drop versus if you're doing it really quickly, you're going to have to swing your foot around to catch it much faster. Yeah, the faster you go and the more friction that it has there. Um, <laughs> but uh, as far as a solution... Um, practice. Practice? Mm -hmm. That's always the solution, right? <laughs> when you get more and more comfortable, you figure out like the limits of, of where you can put your foot before you drop and, and catch again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, and on the subject of lines too, though, like I would always practice very specific tricks and still do on their own. But I think this past year or so, um, especially on our Friday skates on the boardwalk, I've been focusing on stringing tricks together. And that started with not being able to string them together and doing a trick, feeling super awkward and having to set back up and then kind of do the next one. And then Maddie would be filming me. He says, Gabe, what are you doing? You're going diagonally. You're going in like a zigzag line mm. with your tricks. I couldn't do them straight mm. because I was focusing on, you know, landing weird and setting back up and I was going every which direction. So I think a good way to maybe practice it is whatever trick you're trying to add to it, make that a consistent like combination. Uh, I talked to Chen, Chen Shuoma about this. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure you see him in USA. Yeah, yeah. So we talked about um, you're not going to be comfortable adding a trick to a line in a certain configuration unless that's the way you practiced it. Um, mm -hmm. So say a Tokyo directly to a throwback is much different than, say, a throwback directly to a Tokyo. Now, I know you're going to switch and that one, that one's different, but just switching the tricks around is a whole different feel. So if, say, you're going out... Um, filming a line that you're uncomfortable with, you're probably going to be more likely to list, miss some of those tricks because your brain isn't used to mm -hmm. that specific order. So a lot, all, all to say, that's what I do when I practice, is I'll practice things in a specific order so I can get used to that order of tricks. So. Yeah, yeah and, and another thing is like going to, I really like it when I find like a, open area so you go to like a giant open area where you don't have to pay as much attention to this mm -hmm. it's like it it is being nice to yourself kind of and that's like mm -hmm. an important part of free skates is like is like making it so that you want to go out and do these things so it's like if you're having this issue where like dang i just don't have enough space in my tokyo lasts too long like mm -hmm. just try to you know find a spot where you don't even have to worry about that every once in a while and then um, the more Tokyos you do, because you enjoy doing the Tokyos, the better you're going to get it and the more able you're going to be able to do it in, like, you know, in close space. Yeah, yeah, I think that's evident from, I guess, me doing the inverse. I shouldn't be so comfortable, like, as comfortable as I am with the inverse because it's such an awkward thing to do. Yeah. Because so, not, not, most people don't do that. Most people prefer the normal one. But mm -hmm. So as a result, I'm kind of slow and weird and uncomfortable at the normal one now i i would probably maybe compare my progress at the normal one like at where you're at trey or even a little worse because it, i just don't do it so mm -hmm. it's the exact flip of it i think yeah so but it's just because i put an unreasonable amount of practice into the inverse one so it's just what i'm comfortable with now <clears throat> yeah uh chris like how do you do tokyo's so if I ever um, fly to Tokyo, I usually <laughs> have to do a flight up to San Francisco and then you fly into either Narita or maybe you go straight into Tokyo. I don't remember. Um, but then when I switch to come back, I have to surprisingly inverse, inverse Tokyo, come yeah. from Japan back to San Francisco and then down to San Diego, being that so, it's an international yeah. airport as well. So is that the normal and then and then inverse? <laughs> And then sometimes, like if I'm in a, if I'm in a, on, on, on the chair on the airplane, I cross my legs. Um, but then it gets uncomfortable so that I don't cross my legs because I'm, uh, I'm a little bigger than some. If I could, I'd buy more than one seat, but not quite in that realm of uh, funds yet. So, but yeah, that's just what I do. That's just what I do. You guys try it. It's great. <laughs> We actually, I actually have tried it. I, I went to Tokyo, I flew into Tokyo like before for uh, the, the Japan competition. 
And yeah. it took a really long time and a lot of space, more space than there is in a garage. Yeah. Dang. <laughs> <laughs> a lot longer, a lot longer. Weird. 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 Weird how that works out. You thought you were yeah. catching me off guard, but I had an answer. Jim. You were prepared. Well. You were very I was prepared. ready. I wrote that down last week. Oh, oh wow. Come at me. Yeah. yeah. Get a life. <laughs> loser. I'm a loser. Uh, um, what other tricks are you working on? Um, I started working on the turnaround, but I think <laughs> I need to, I think I need to, uh, work on my, what is it? Yeah. Right on my back foot more. I feel like, cause I can't, I don't know. I can't focus on, I can make this skate turn around, but like, I just fall like that back foot just drops down. They don't like keep, I don't keep riding. So I kind of paused on that for a minute. Now I've been uh, making my, uh, what do they call it? Oh, did you cut out? Do we lose your arrow? Can you hear me? Oh, yeah. We I can. can. Good to go. I, I thought you were just like contemplating like what it is Hello? called. You can, just, you can describe it, uh, the trick. Did we lose him? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Muted. I think he lost sound. Lost sound. We'll, well be right back. Yeah, technical difficulties. Um, no, still not. Um, What are we talking about in the meantime? Chris, uh, entertain us. All right. Um, yeah, I was, I was hoping you'd call me again uh, to tell you a story about- Because you wrote something down a talk week ago, about, didn't you? Um, yeah. yeah, about two weeks ago, I wrote a story about three guys on a, a podcast where there was technical difficulties. Um, and then we had to fill some air time. So I just continued to talk until somebody figured out their sound. Um, yeah. And then he eventually, is it back on now? <clears throat> no, damn it. Damn it. I really thought I would, I didn't really thought I would manifest that. How oh, unfortunate. <laughs> How do you do the technical difficulties? Enjoy this episode of Halftime, Chris. Well, I mean, let's keep going. What other questions do you have uh, that we can answer that's not necessarily real specific until he uh, gets his sound back on? Let's see. How to bring people together. Um, bringing people together. I mean, I mean, let's. How about people in the chat? What do you guys want to hear about? Muting us for the birds. Perfect. Um, unless they can make noises, like. Huh? Yeah. Whoa. Yeah, it's impressive. <laughs> and they're not muted. How did that come through? Um, came through interestingly. Interestingly, um, good. Serious question: Do you wear Thank pads? You when learning new tricks mm. i uh wore wrist guards um when i was doing a lot of tricks uh not so much anymore honestly i got better at not falling by um being more comfortable on the skates and and getting more comfortable with like the boundaries of my uh of my oh we lost chris <laughs> people are dropping out like flies <laughs> getting more comfortable with like the, the edges of my knowledge. Um, but yeah, wrist guards were a huge thing for me uh, when I was beginning a, a lot of tricks Yeah, uh, because I would end up falling on my, on the back of my wrist with my left hand and it was like always fucked up and it was annoying. Yeah. So, I mean, we were, I, I was, um, two and a half, maybe three years into my journey. Rip Chris, he will be missed. Yes. Um, so even when I was in San Diego, I had been skating for quite a bit, but still I haven't mastered and still have not obviously, but I didn't quite have down the art of falling. So therefore, um, I found myself landing on my wrists quite frequently, which especially when you have them extended, your arms extended, that's not, not, not the move. 
Um, so I invested in some wrist guards, um, which I started re- wearing on the regular until falling became a natural instinct for me. So like when I feel that I'm about to fall, my body kind of has learned how to roll out of it or, and now this isn't always, sometimes I have my bad falls, but, um, having those wrist guards as well as ankle guards for tricks has allowed me to learn how to fall, learn how to screw up and get injured less in the process. And then coming out of that, I haven't done as much pads recently. I would say the exception is maybe a helmet when dropping in and doing sketchy stuff in bowls because I'm just not familiar. So I would say, Chris, yes, it is a great idea. And I have done it too, whenever you're trying something new. Um, and you feel uncomfortable, just whatever things you think apply. Yeah, if you haven't, if you keep landing on the same spot over and over, like if you're having issues with your elbow, um, definitely pad up because if you fall and then you're out for a week, you're going to lose out on learning anyway. So you might as well put pads where you, you keep falling. I don't ever try anything hard enough to fall, so I don't usually wear them. Uh, Serenated Abyss says, I rarely wear. Mm-hmm. Well, stuff. I do wear a helmet at the park. Don't fall much when practicing flat. I don't really get hurt. Yeah, it does yeah. depend on the speed and the the nature of what you're practicing. Because you know, if you're a Sukasa and you're in a park, or I shouldn't say him specifically, but if you're any free skater in the park, you have such an increased elevation and possibility, therefore possibility of getting hurt. Um, but in flat, like uh, Serenaded is saying. Uh, you can have a that. lot less, yeah. But the well, risk is a lot lower. Um, Chris says that he has more issues on elbows and knees um, than wrists. Um, and that, I've noticed that happens um, like that yesterday we were filming and I was demonstrating what happens when you lean too much and your toes scrape and then my knee slammed the ground like awkwardly hard. And I was like, I was not expecting that. I think it was just like it snuck up on me. Whereas with wrists, um, it's when I'm expecting to fall and I throw it out to like to protect myself. So it's kind of when do you realize you're falling and how how much prep do you have to uh, um, before you hit the ground kind of thing. Well, your guys' worst falls ever. My worst fall ever. Ooh, is that a customer? Yeah, John's here though. Sprint around. You saw a shadow go by. Cool. Um, man, Hurl switched to AirPods, and no, I unfortunately still can't hear you. Uh, do you want to just restart? Um, you can reopen the link uh, on the. Yeah, hop off and hop on. Maybe it'll help. It. Yeah, just restart your computer. <clears throat> Um, you only tumbled forward once when we were filming that, Jeff, right? Yeah. Oh, do you I have could, the video? I could pull up the clip. Do you have the whole thing? Oh, after? perfect. That'd be awesome. Um, all right. So you guys are going to get a sneak peek of Jeff falling. Tell me if this is actually it, Jeff. I'll add her all. It's my okay. favorite, favorite stuff. Can you hear me now? Yes. yes. Ooh, ooh, ooh. We did it. We solved soundboard. the crisis. I need a soundboard. <laughs> <laughs> Applause. All right. Man. That I was feel, frustrating. <laughs> oh, yeah. I you feel fell? hard. Yeah. I fell so hard. I was listening to my AirPods and they changed my next song. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what do you have to do for that? Like, you have to hit the. Yeah, you have on. to, like, you have to double tap. You have to double <laughs> tap for it. Oh, so you double tapped your ear yeah. onto something. Yeah. Did you find but, the clip, Gabe? Yes. Um, here. Okay, we're gonna so, watch Jeff. Hurt we his just knee. filmed yesterday, and Jeff, I don't think I see you hitting your knee, but maybe you did. Oh, it's so gray. Bam! Ooh. Right there. Oh, right weird? there at the end. Like when I no, like yeah, when I rolled right there. And yeah, bam. that's okay. when my my knee hit. Look at that spring of spring of embarrassment right at the end of your watch. <laughs> at the Go end, slow. I'm like, 
He's yeah. going to spring up like, nobody's watching, nobody's watching, I'm not being recorded, right? <laughs> I'm fine, nobody look over here. The, the okay. bounce, the bounce. Just checking the, the air pressure. <laughs> checking the air pressure on this van's tires. Everything's going good. Yep, it's good. Yeah, that's that's exactly. Yeah, I've had some of those, boy. Yeah, where you end up rolling. Mm -hmm. um, but that roll was incorrectly executed. Usually a roll is pretty good, but... You know, I'm I'm kind of a bony dude, so occasionally, if you I mess up a little, the, you mm -hmm. should have rolled as an end in slamming your knee. Mm -hmm. I I missed that when I initially <laughs> watched it. I was looking for the initial impact, but it was after you rolled a little bit. I jumped up like a superhero. <laughs> yeah, good. Yeah. If you could only land like one, like that typical superhero, like <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> crack the yeah, um, boom, only with your hand up like this, <laughs> and then slowly just look up like this and like. Da -da -da. That's not like my worst. Uh, my worst fall wasn't even a fall. Like if I, if I did fall, it would have been a better situation because I was just riding, and one of my skates kicked out, and I just tried to hold myself up by dragging my foot, but putting all the weight on my front foot. My my ankle still clicks, still has a nice click in it from that. And that was like over click. ten years ago. Wow. The nice like learn how to fall, guys, because it's it's way better. Oh yeah, for than, than not because my body type doesn't fall well. Like Jeff sprung up, I would I pancake. It's just like a, <laughs> and then just like a. <laughs> and honestly, learn how to not fall. You know. Yeah, true. Because um, like there there is a saying that says if you're not falling, you're not trying hard enough. Mm -mm. But on free skates, you know that might be true on skateboarding. Like, yeah. You know, These... I feel like skateboarding causes a lot of falls. Yeah. These are so easy to bail from. That's why. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So you can try hard and not fall on free skates, which is yeah, one of it's my inevitable favorite aspects. Though. It's inevitable, I feel like, at some point. Yeah, yeah. Like, I've I'm fallen sure twice that. in, like, 12 years, but that's because, like I said, I'm not – I don't have a high-risk, high-reward situation going on when I ride. It's more just <laughs> for enjoyment and then, mm -hmm. like, okay, time to rest. Yeah. Where's that yeah. pizza, you know, stuff like that. Right. That's, Low risk, no reward. That's yeah. your... Uh, excuse me. <laughs> Everybody has a different reason why they ride, Jeffrey. And <laughs> of all people, you should know that. I do it for enjoyment. Okay, good. There's that's why I like free skating. Yeah. Because it's like, there are people that do like all the tricks and then there's just cruisers, you know? Mm. I, I like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of cruisers at my college. People would just mm -hmm. learn how to ride until they could go to class. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And then Transport. I was always baffled. I was like, why'd you stop? Like, keep <laughs> learning. <laughs> but it's obviously because they're, you know, focusing on other things, you know, and just using Graduated. them for transport. Uh, Chris B says, my worst is bruising ribs when I lurch forward after a wider than expected road crack. Dude, when you're skate, I thought I broke a rib. Um, <laughs> well, first of all, glad oh, you did. Um, did you land on the skate? Well, the, the, it's when, when there's like a crack so big that um, my interpretation of this is like when it hits a crack so big that it almost like falls into the crack. And like it's eats like a your skate. Hole almost. Mm -hmm. um, and if it's your and, front skate, it's even worse because you're riding and then all of a sudden your front like comes out from under you. Yeah. yeah. I mean, so my, I used to have a 15 block commute to and from work. Um, <laughs> to and from jmk so i got used to skating long distance every morning every evening and i got really comfortable on the way back on some downhills and especially in the darker parts of the year uh season wise um i got a i got a little too comfortable because um it gets pitch black right oh and on na neighborhood this streets story that with almost no lights um hello taylor um, it's down down Lamont. Um, yeah, there's a hill going down towards Garnett, and it's pretty cracky. I didn't know that in between the yellow lines in the center, there's just a part where there isn't road. It's just a just a hole that's down just in nowhere. It's like it's as deep as like half of the wheel, I guess. Mm. And I was carving along the middle line like this, and once it that that hole started, the skate just sunk, and mm. my body kept going forward and i um i my whole body i pancaked it, it, it was your front you you tended to like hit your front arm a lot i got i had yeah i had scrapes bruises all on the side of my body because the whole thing just took impact into the pavement i don't know how fast i was going but it was 
a downhill sort of speed while trying to carve. So um, oh, good. that was probably my worst because I got too comfortable in a situation where I could not see. Um, would not yeah. recommend that. So I think around then is where I was like, I need to start wearing these pads in these situations. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, they are definitely more dangerous when you're tired as well. Chris yeah. says that. Um, yeah. Honestly. I remember a story of Gabe falling where it was like pitch black. There was no moon, you know, and we were skating up oh. to back up to John's house after like going down to get some food. And um, we were, I was literally commenting on the fact that we can't see the road at all. And I was like, there could just be like a giant pit and we mm. wouldn't see it at all. Like it feels like I'm just skating on nothing. <laughs> yeah, and I was then, like, yeah, that's right. It's kind of, it kind of feels like a void, huh? And right when I said that, you know, the skate the falls skate. into a hole and I your just skate, yeah. slay him. It's always your front skate. That's why you lean back. When you lean back, you're more likely to lose your back skate and your front skate is lighter weight. So it, it rolls over things. Did and I drop my burrito? Or did, you fling, did you fling your burrito? Well, that's I'm another sure. story that doesn't involve free skates. Were you there when I like flung the burrito? Gabe, Gabe has terrible accuracy oh, in aim. So if there's ever a projectile idea. in his hands, just run. Just run. I mean, it's somewhat irrelevant, but I was leaving a burrito store with Matt. Um, and I was like, for some reason, I thought it was a good idea to take the burrito inside the plastic bag, hold the handle of the plastic bag and start whipping it around like a, I don't know. Like a and then when it, and then when it hits this angle, the, the handle detaches and all I'm holding is a little piece of plastic in my hand and the yep. burrito shoots out of 45 and just flies wow. through the sky at good distance. And it rolled yeah. under a car. It, it went under a car. Under a car to get it. Yeah, yeah. It's weird that a plastic bag from a taco shop didn't have the structural integrity that you expected for centrifugal <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was a fat burrito yeah no, Dude, we should do an episode on just the science of that <laughs> like yeah. so when your burrito hit the precipice up here it actually actually <laughs> velocity 24 degrees but <laughs> how quickly can we sling a burrito before it over over I mean, what are we talking about i can eat one pretty fast so hey me too me too guys nice. Have you ever been to um, SoCal, Trey? No. That's, really? That's one of my dream places to go to. Yeah, it would be probably awesome like, to see you out here. Probably like this year, maybe next year. Oh, really? Yeah. Do it. Do it. Yeah. I mean, we yeah also... Do it when there's inclement weather. Just come here and then it'll probably be 70. Yeah. Um, so, like, escape for a bit and come here, and we'll we'll yes. be here for you. Do y'all summers be like hot, hot, or it just be? Yeah, I mean, it's it's dry heat mostly, but it gets up to like ninety, dependent on the day. Um, coastal, it's usually eighty five at the most, but it'll get up to ninety sometimes. Yeah, y'all lucky. It'd be like one hundred and three here. <laughs> yeah, with, with humidity sometimes. Yeah. 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 yeah, that's what my favorite. Favorite. so much works always. Um, Taylor it. says that free skates brought her together with Jaren at UCSD. We like to practice on campus once a week. That is super awesome. Um, Jaren has been coming to our Thursday lessons as well, so it's super cool. Um, uh, seeing people come together over free skating. Yeah, the definitely a conversation piece. Yeah, he gets it. He gets it. Yay. <laughs> See, we don't need a soundboard. We got him. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Leon, invited for every future's podcast. Yeah. <laughs> He's got the sound mix going. Cuba Cheese has a good idea here. It says, should make lights that strap on to light your path. Usually you have to hold my phone. You should definitely get a flashlight rather than your phone. But, you know, phones work. He's gonna um, carry around a flashlight. I mean, I do sometimes. Not, not, no, not no, like, a, like, a, yeah, like a big mag light, like a, <laughs> like a cop. You look like a cop just running like, hey, hey, it was, open up, up. open up. <laughs> yeah, you no, should just carry I'm, like I don't know, like a construction lighting, and you'll be fine. Yeah. Well, when I'm riding my oh, electric oh. unicycle at night, I'll have a flashlight too because. You know, oh, yeah. it's, with free skates, it's especially important to see where you're going. Mm -hmm. I used Does that help you with I... like um, depth, Jeff? Like depth of holes, if you could shine the flashlight down. Yeah. yeah. 
Especially when you're going how fast on your on your electric unicycle. Just the neighborhood <laughs> narc. <laughs> hey, what's yeah. going on in there? Open up. Hey, you guys having fun? Where you? I heard you just threw a burrito at a car. I heard there was <laughs> burrito <laughs> slinging. It was an accident. It was an accident. The plastic bag's integrity. It's we have a podcast loud. about it. <laughs> podcast. We're actually suing the taco shop for damages. <laughs> We're not. You're for burritos, fail. not damn. For burritos. But I would have three burritos and I'll drop the charges. <laughs> that sounds like a deal. Any other tricks that uh, you had questions on, Trey? Uh, while we're here, since we're kind of nearing the hour long mark. That was a trick. Dang, what was it? Uh, Tokyo dual kickflips, switch it off a six stair. Wow. What? Ooh, who are we doing that? <laughs> Literally no one. No <laughs> one's done that. Go- ghosts. Ghosts. Uh, yeah, ghosts. I guess People like right now, I've off, like that, like ledges and stuff like that. I still haven't got that down. That's so tough. Yeah. yeah. Ledges? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, yeah we could do it pretty consistently, I feel like. It's more of a mental thing, I think, for me, kind of. Mm. Like, I'll do it, but like I'll like go for it, send it, but then I'm like, in my head, I'm just like, uh, sometimes I'll be like, want to close my eyes. <laughs> it's it's definitely um it's definitely possible to eat it, you know, mm-hmm. when you're doing those. So as long as you try to land, you know, in that active stance where your legs are apart and um, like more or less underneath you. It should be okay, but yeah. if you were to land it and like be leaning forward and you land here, like it'll sweep you. Mm, see, that's what I'm scared of right there. And I'm like, uh, yeah. So start I mean, with your legs apart and and try and keep them apart. What got that might be a good time there. to use the elbow pad. Ooh, just one elbow pad, so mm-hmm. when you go down, you can just have one there at least. What got me to land mm-hmm. it is instead of going straight off the curb, I'll like go alongside it and mm-hmm. then bring both skates down at once. Um, so okay, like, I, see, I seen that. I seen so, that. so yeah, instead of um, let's see, these are my legs. I'm going off the curb, taking the curb alongside, and then choosing a point to just shift because uh, you, ah. you only have to shift both your skates so much because you're you're riding the curb already. So you mm-hmm. need to go er, and then you're down. <laughs> um, it just takes a little bit of like practice with each individual foot like have you ever gone up to a ledge and practice only taking one skate on top of the ledge? yeah you can practice one foot at a time and that's like way less dangerous yeah Yeah. less dangerous and it teaches just the science of left lifting oh lifting up your body weight Um, it's it's obviously pretty (laughs) it's going to be difficult when it's your whole body and both skates at once but um yeah, that, that, that initial practice will give you a good start. And the riding alongside is infinitely easier. I still haven't figured out how to land it um, directly head on. So that's what I would recommend. Yeah. Um, John says, what that's is your dream, dream trick? trick? Oops. Do a backflip. <laughs> I'll be doing those. But uh, probably nice. like the, the dual kickflip. See you, Chris. Thanks for stopping by. Dual kickflip. Yeah, dual kickflip. That'd dual be looking kickflip. nice. Yeah, where you like, like bounce up and you're yeah. with some crazy tricks. Yeah, Are you talking just like this one where they go like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, cool. Because I can do them like nice. single, like you can do a single kickflip. Yeah, I can do front and back. And back, okay, mm-hmm. better than me. Oh, back you're almost is, there. Back is difficult. Better than yes. both me and Gabe. We don't have. Uh, we don't surprisingly, have, me too. Surprisingly, <laughs> yeah, right. So you're closer What's, to that than both me and Gabe. That's crazy, right? Well, well, I've yeah. It, but Have you got? Yeah, you got that. But not consistently, and I've only landed it twice, and that's because I don't have control with both. Um, what, what would you say your back one is harder, Trey, or your front? If you had to choose, yeah, it's my back because I learned the front first. I feel yeah, like it's my dominant foot. I feel like I just think also the back foot. You're kicking it in the direction opposite of motion. With your front foot, you're kicking it along with the direction you're going. So for me, I feel like the front foot is just a more natural trick to do. You're not trying to cancel anything out. 
um, dream trick right now is just to kick flip switch it. Yeah, just to kick. Who, who's that? Who said that? Serenade of Abyss. Serenade of Abyss. Didn't you land one? I thought I saw a video of, uh, was it Serenade of Abyss that just sent a video of landing their first kick flip switch it? That's yeah, awesome, though, if, if possible. Back is definitely nice. harder, even though I learned it first. Yeah, back is wonky. Um, why is that? Same. I learned it first, um, but I, my my back foot kick flips a lot of times were like more very close to the edge or like pressure flip mm. kind of, and really just hoping to land mm. it. But I learned the control part when I started doing my front and covering like half of the whole skate or more. Mm -hmm. um, one, one interesting thing I saw Jack do. I'm gonna see if I can pull up this video. Um, you know Jack Napek from Instagram. Dude is Napec. amazing. Napec. He Napek. Is it? He Napec? helped me with my 360 too. Oh, he did. He was just up there. Yep. Um, but I was trying to learn how to do the spin. Yeah, no, awesome. he just uh, he uh, what's it called? Live video with me. Mm. With me. Cool. Yeah, he goes live a lot. Yeah, it's pretty fun. He yeah, awesome. so. He, so. He covers a lot of the skate, especially for something like a kickflip switch it. Yeah. Um, I will share the screen right now. So I'm gonna see if I can play this at like half speed. Make it bigger. Yeah, so he's covering see his um on our right, his left foot yeah. um, is about to do a kickflip. And look how much of it is covering the skate. Most and of it, yeah. Most yeah. Of it. And still, he was able to get the leverage, but I think that also translates to that much more control over the kickflip yeah. if you can manage to get that kind of. You gotta, thing. you gotta do the flick. Yeah, you gotta. Yeah. So for for if your foot is like on the side of the skate, like you you do more pushing down, and that causes mm -hmm. it to rotate. But if it's right in the middle, you have to flick it like with your ankle like that. Yeah, like how you mm -hmm. do it, like a kickflip, like with a skateboard. Oh like, yeah, like they yeah. they slide and curve it like with that. With a kickflip, they also like flick yeah. it out like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's interesting. It's kind of parallel to the actual kickflip. <laughs> mm -hmm. Sweet. But, um, cool. Any uh, other things that I'll, you guys want to say before we conclude this podcast? No, it was just yeah, awesome to talk with Earl. Us. It was great. It was to first time you're meeting you face to face. It's been great. Same, yeah. same, same. Second time for me and Jeff. Uh, second yeah. time. <laughs> first time. <laughs> time. First time on record. <laughs> yeah, make it out to San Diego as soon as you can, and then we all skate together. Me for about five minutes, but they'll skate with you like <laughs> longer. Yeah, oh, yeah I'll actually sure, wait till man. you're tired, and I'll skate with you. <laughs> Get all no, I, mean, I, I have to say like keep it keep it up like i love yeah. seeing all, all the videos you post and and like you know it's just cool um people see you out there every day and i i'm guarantee you motivating you know like a dozen other people to get out there and skate with all the videos all the content so mm -hmm. you know that's kind of that's kind of our motivation a part of it as well um is just to motivate people to get out there and enjoy the sport. Uh, we all share an intense obsession with this sport. <laughs> Man, just love a love for it. Yeah, it's crazy because I never did any other like type of like like skating and stuff like that. Skateboarding. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I wasn't I wasn't too into skateboarding. I would just do it occasionally when I was in like high school, and then <clears throat> free skating sort of filled a niche that I was really in need of, I guess. Yeah. I just did like BMX and parkour and stuff like that. But that's about nice. it. That's cool. So um, you know how to, wait, you did parkour, but you're afraid of a curb? <laughs> Yo. Cause that's how I busted my head. <laughs> I tried oh, to do okay. A, <laughs> I tried to do I was like, wait a minute. I was gonna of, say, like, you concrete could, ledge. Wow. I was gonna say, you could talk to Link, Link Pudding. Do you know who that is? Yeah. He's uh, pretty, he's pretty he, dang yeah. good at parkour. If I've ever yeah. seen, I've seen his videos. He'd be like all on the, uh, it's not uneven bars, but it's just like one single bar. 
maybe doing flips and stuff like that. Oh, look at that. Cuba Cheese says that uh, watching Trey led to getting the Frisbee stomp consistent. That's awesome. Cool. Yo, that was my move. Like, I thought it was the coolest move. Like, <laughs> it is. You could call and, it the Trey flip. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then I learned. Like, then I learned that what's it the sandwich stomp that was cool. Oh, that one's cool too. Yeah, yeah the sandwich that. stomp. I've never been yeah. able to get. That was uh, James Dylan Brown came came through to the. Uh, do you know James Dylan Brown Trey? Uh, uh, maybe it's awesome. Um, he came through San Diego a couple times. One of which at the bubble meetup, he showed me the sandwich stomp. He's like, "Hey, Gabe, check this out," and I was like, "Wait, you could do that." Like I've seen maybe some obscure videos of people doing that, but like I saw it and I was like, "Let me try." And it's so hard. Uh, I haven't figured it out, but um, I guess that just means you need to spend more time with it. No, it's easier than you think, bro. It's really easy. Really? Yeah. I feel like may maybe the that one the skates maybe are together depends on the hands. Yeah. Because I'm trying okay. to like make sure the skates are held before I mean to drop them, and then mm -hmm. I just drop them too soon. And so I just hold it like that. And then squeeze it. That's what you do. So they separate. Yeah, you squeeze them at the. You have you hold it with the tip of your fingers, and you squeeze it, and they just gonna fold oh, out. That hurts. They just gonna fold out. Like oh, God, God, Gabe. The grip Gabe's, tape. Gabe's actually oh, better yeah. at the burrito fling stomp. The grip, <laughs> the grip yeah. tape is really catching my fingers. This one's. Oh, this yeah. is the sharp stuff. You oh yeah, yeah. that's something fresh. That's fresh right there. Yeah. That's your roommates. Yeah. Yeah. It's, they're probably like. Maybe a year and a half old. I don't know. I'm still on my that's, first pair of skates. That's a good tip for the uh, sandwich stomp because I would just imagine you just drop them and hope for the best, but adding that little bit of pressure will help them separate a lot easier, mm -hmm. it sounds like. That would be my first trick I ever land. <laughs> oh, yeah. Besides stepping on and riding. And and falling. Have y'all um, seen anybody do I that I think you mean trick? laying down artfully. <laughs> Artfully, call. artistically, that's a word. Anyways, yep. Anyways, we gotta wrap up here. I think. Oh, we got a last. We got oh, a last a second comment? message. Uh, Six to seven of us. Oh wow! Uh, so yeah. like, I go to school at Eckerd College, and at my first, oh, first only one guy had them, and now six to hmm. seven of us that all stay See? together. And we're gonna start uh, a free skate club. Please no. do you Send. join the free skate clubs? Uh, the, I made a blog post on jmkride.com about starting uh, free skate clubs, so you should check that out and mm -hmm. or send me a DM because I also started a free skate club and so did that guy. What? What? Yeah, yeah. At our at our college. Well, no, Gabe didn't start a free skate club. He was a member. And I didn't I start it either. Much. I continued it. Right? <laughs> oh, I, I did start it. I <laughs> did was, you start I was, it? I was co-founder with JC and Eric. Nice. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry it's okay. about that. Look at him trying to say you didn't and then say he did. <laughs> and then I both, didn't. Yeah. Rescind both, both statements. statements. I'm putting a Jinx. real foot in my mouth at this point. Delete, delete, delete. Delete. Backspace, backspace, backspace. <laughs> Um, that is awesome to start a free skate club, especially and skating with six to seven people. Like that's that's just the most fun that's yeah. possible to have. <laughs> what is this, Gabe? There that's your are. club. Those are the those are the OG recruits. Thank you. Those were all freshmen that that were that were at our uh, orientation thing, and they saw the skates, and they all wanted to try, so they all got some. Some some knockoffs. JC in that picture is the only one with JMKs. I had not seen the light yet. <laughs> the light, seen the light. Yeah. Well, I'd seen the light, but I didn't have the money for JMKs yet, so I was I was saving up. Okay, but uh, yeah, there's some contests. There. Anyways, well, um, I think it was great talking to you today, Trey, and um, keep it Likewise. up. Likewise. Awesome. Um, thank you, everybody, for watching. Gasgano says good night from Barcelona. That's awesome. Ooh, from Bar Barcelona. Barcelona. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, anything else you guys have to share? No, okay. just thanks for coming on. Come on again. 
Definitely. And thanks for having me. Sweet. We're going to try and have more guests on um, future podcasts as yes. well. I think Trey will be the first of hopefully many. So yes. whoop, whoop. Whoop. looking forward to it. All right. So this was episode 13. Join us next week for episode 14 of the Free Skates podcast. We are doing this every Tuesday at 3 p.m. Pacific Standard, unless otherwise mentioned. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. Nice, guys. Bye. See ya.